Hey, my friends, welcome. This is Dave Sharp to the Legendary Podcast. I'm not going to quit my day job. Don't worry. You aren't going to have to endure much more of my singing for much longer because I'm probably going to get some hate mail over it. However, I am excited about this episode. It's the final episode in our five part series of this Legendary Entrepreneur Podcast kickoff, which we've been streaming here. I say streaming, it's not live, it's recorded, but here on video, you can access that. If you're listening here on iTunes or anywhere else around the world via audio, you can find that on legendarypodcast.com. You can get the downloads, you can get the blueprints, you can get the videos, and you can get other awesomeness when you subscribe to our newsletter. We'll send you only awesomeness and nothing lame ever. Let's jump into what we got today. So I'm going to be talking about, as I talked on last on the last episode, about customer clarity, okay? What do you mean, Dave, customer clarity? Well, the last episode I talked about getting clear on what you want as an entrepreneur. I told stories, I painted the picture about my pain and my experience that just fucking sucked as a entrepreneur who really didn't map out my business before I began building it and I built it in a way that served others, but I didn't build it to serve me. And so I see a lot of entrepreneurs who do that. They build their business to serve others, and then they find themselves divorced or miserable or with no relationships with their kids, or they end up, for God's sakes, hating their business. And that's a problem. If you're an entrepreneur and you've ever, and you've been in the game for a while, you may have some experience building a business and then being like, oh my God, I hate my business because it's not really a business that serves me too. Yes, it might be making money. Yes, people may be consuming the products, but I've met a lot of entrepreneurs and I haven't quite hated my business, but I've hated the way that I've structured my business. So I say all that to say, I'm not gonna go into any of that anymore. Go listen to episode number four. It will rock your socks off and What I'm gonna be talking about today is figuring out who we want as our customers. So many people and entrepreneurs, which you don't learn this in Harvard, you don't learn this in the other universities, you you just don't. Even most entrepreneur coaches who wanna tell people how to build their business get this one wrong. They say, well, if somebody's willing to give you money, you take it, you close anybody, here's how to close anyone, anytime, anywhere, any place. And the problem is, is that you may not want to close and take money from just anybody. I'm going to talk about why on this episode. So I'm going to be giving you some questions to ask yourself. And this is going to be via a download that you can get over on Legendary Podcast under episode five. That's going to take you through a process that's going to give you some clarity about who you do want to serve. It's gonna ask you questions like, what personal qualities and characteristics do you want your ideal customer to have? Do you want your ideal customer to be a leader, an achiever? Do you want them, what what characteristics about their personality do you want them to have? What qualities and characteristics do you not want them to have? We, We oftentimes don't think about that before we start our business, like, do I want to attract chronic refunders? Do I want to attract people who are going to complain? Do I want to attract people who are going to be negative? Well, the answer most likely is no, but a lot of the marketing material that we create attracts those people into our business or into our culture. Why would we go through a process to where we ask ourselves questions like, what financial demographic would you like your ideal customer to fit in? where we ask ourselves questions like, how do you wish your customers and your prospects to view you? Do you want to be the Kia? Do you want to be the Chevrolet? Or do you want to be the Rolls Royce? The reason why we're going through a process to understand who we really want to serve is because we have the ability to either do it from the start or redo the whole process over again and position ourselves in our business however we want. What I mean is literally design our business in a way that executes and creates a specific type of result. 
So if I know exactly what I want in my business, which was episode four, and now I know exactly what type of client that I want to serve, which is this episode, I have the ability to then structure all of my programs, all of my products, all of my services, and all of my marketing material in a way that lets me get that specific outcome. I'll talk about being a Walmart or being a Louis Vuitton and use that as, as sort of an example to illustrate the difference between competing on price and competing where there's only value and there's only perceived value. Here's what I mean. A lot of people come into business, whether it be selling some sort of a manufactured good, whether it be selling some sort of a physical product or even a service, okay, whether you're a plumber or you're a lawyer, whether you're an accountant, whether you're a coach or some sort of a service provider, and they play the Walmart role or they try to build the Walmart business model. And what I mean by that is they come in and they say, you know what, I'm the cheapest in town. I'm going to try to win your business over by competing on price and telling you that I am the cheapest in town. And if you come and if you buy from me, I'm giving you the right to tell me that if you find a cheaper price in any of the advertisements, because you remember this, right? Like when the, you see an ad for like Sears or something and you say, if you find a better price, we will match it or beat it. So if you find a better price anywhere in the world or on any advertisement or anywhere on the internet, you bring it to me and we'll beat it. If you're positioning your business on price, which some of you that may fit, right? if you're building a Walmart business model. What you're doing is you're attracting a specific type of customer. And here's the deal, there is no victims only volunteers, not only in life but also in business, especially after you have this sort of information, which I didn't have when I first got started. So I, I did attract a lot of people who were competing on price. I had people and have had people, not so much anymore, but in the past, who would spend 25 or $30 with me and oh my God, they would put in thousands of customer support tickets and jam up all of my lines and, and be just furious that they didn't get a million dollars worth of value because they paid $25 or $30 or $50. Whereas, as I began to serve and change and focus my marketing message on a client who was interested and really understood the value of what I was providing, they would put down 10, 15, 20, 25, $50,000 and you would hardly hear a peep out of them. And so as I started to have these different experiences and I started to see the difference in somebody who went into Walmart, I want you to think about it. I'm not trying to put down Walmart here. So Walmart's a great business. Um, as a matter of fact, my uncle works, works for Walmart. He's an assistant manager. So I got no beef with, with Wally World. What I am demonstrating here and I want you to picture if you've been in some of you won't even step foot in Walmart or Kmart or stores like this just because you feel like if you go there and you shop you are you are feeding into sort of this 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 culture of lack in a sense and so I know a lot of people who won't even shop at Walmart but I want you to admit there's nothing wrong with Walmart it's a great business model it's a great example for what I'm talking about I want you to think about kind of the personality and, and the way you see people behaving in a store like this. People come in, they throw stuff on the floors, they, the, 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 you know, you go into the bathroom and it's a disaster, you walk down the aisles and just shit is just flown everywhere and people are at the customer service desk banging and, and they're you know, there's a McDonald's there usually and they're in there pounding shakes and, and fries and burgers and stuff like that. And it's just this big atmosphere of entitlement and expectation. And that's really what it is because they're, they're the lowest price always, right? I think that's their tagline. Now, I want you to envision if you haven't ever been into a Louis Vuitton store. As a matter of fact, I got some Louis Vuitton sitting right here nice little computer bag. I've got some other luggage, which I would recommend that you don't buy 
like the big suitcase Louis Vuitton. I actually bought it. It was like 10 grand, and I'm afraid to actually take it and travel with it because I feel like if somebody sees it on the conveyor belt, they'll just pick it up and steal it. It's like a $10,000 suitcase. So I went and bought a Tumi, and I travel with that instead. But I do have Louis Vuitton stuff, and I've shopped there a lot. And when I go into the store, what I find is the complete opposite from what I find at Walmart. I find a beautifully cleaned and unbelievably classy atmosphere. I don't hear people pounding their fist. I don't hear people yelling. I hear people talking in a very, very calm and almost sophisticated manner. People are dressed in suits. I remember a guy named Dallas. He was my sales rep. He called me sir. I asked him to not call me sir. He refused to call me anything but sir because he was instructed by his managers to speak in a specific language. When I went to check out, they wrapped all of my items in this beautiful this beautiful cloth. I don't even know what material it was. They sent me, because I spent $14,000 there on a trip, a, a Christmas card, and the experience was the complete opposite than what I would have at a lower end retail store that competes on price. So I want you to ask yourself, as you stand right now in your business, are you the Walmart, are you the Louis Vuitton, or are you somewhere in between? And if you don't know, the, one of the easiest ways to be able to tell is how are your customers and clients behaving? When they come into your business, are they throwing things on the floor? And maybe you can more think metaphorically. Are they disrespecting? Do they have an attitude of entitlement? How do they type in and speak to customer service? Are they rude? Do they appreciate it? What is the, what is the energy that's behind their communication? Oftentimes when you find customers who are in that entitlement phase or in that entitlement mindset, you can be pretty sure that someone has invited them to behave that way. And that's why I say there's no victims, only volunteers, because what we find as we stick around in this process, in this game called business for long enough, we realize that we really truly do, just like life, create exactly what we have. We literally manifest it from the way that we invite people to treat us. And that's why I say that you can literally create your business with your message and the way that you position yourself and your products in the marketplace however you want to. It is actually up to you. It's not out of your hands like so many people think it is. I talk to a lot of business owners all the time, hundreds, sometimes thousands of emails and messages. And if somebody gets a hold of my phone number, oh, for heaven's sakes, I'm getting texts and calls and voicemails and all that kind of stuff. And what they're saying is, Dave, not all of them, but a lot of them, I, I don't know what to do. It's out of my hands. The market's down. People are not buying. My customers are going crazy. We can't get quality leads. Everybody that we get is broke or frustrated or overwhelmed or they're not willing to invest in themselves or in our products. They're complaining and bitching and moaning about price. And I say, well, okay, where do you think that that's coming from? Well, the economy is down, Dave. The, ever since 2008, the market crashed, recession, it's crazy. People are, there's no money. All of these lies and excuses that we come up with as entrepreneurs and business owners to make ourselves feel better about our situation when the truth is, is that somewhere, someone is quietly getting rich because they're positioning their business in a way that's attracting the right client with the right message for the right experience. And so as you fill out and go through these questions, <clears throat> you're going to have a perspective that's going to allow you to, you're going to get gain a new awareness that's going to allow you to begin to position your product and literally step outside of your little bubble and see your business from a 30,000 foot perspective and say, golly, I've really actually been creating these problems inside of my business by the way that I'm marketing, right? I'll give you another example. I started my career out in network marketing. I mean, I was, I was a pavement pounder, home meeting haver, passing out sampling, just maniac. And 
I didn't know how to market. I didn't know how to communicate. I didn't know anything about positioning. So, you know, I would go around and, and a lot of us have been in, in, you know, network marketing or, or some sort of a, a, you know, a business opportunity to where, you know, there's no fulfillment. There's no, you know, manufacture or anything else. And I, and I still love the industry. It's what literally gave me this, a lot of the skill sets that I have today. And it was, a low barrier to entry it got me started and I'm, I'm, I'm forever grateful i built a network marketing company for heaven's sakes back in 2011 and it did really well we had we made a huge impact however when i first got started i really didn't understand how to position myself so what i did was i i would go and again i didn't know anything about marketing or sales or positioning so and i and and i didn't know what customers i really wanted to attract so I said, oh my gosh, hey, listen, I'm going to hold your hand. You're going to get rich in five minutes. Would you, you just come in. You just buy the product and then boom, magic. It's just overnight success. It's riches. They literally fall from the sky. It's crazy. And guess what? When people enrolled in the business and came on as reps and distributors and all that kind of stuff, guess what they expected? They expected everything that I promised them. And so... I found myself as I looked around in my business surrounded by a bunch of people who had entitlement issues and expectations. And then all of a sudden I got all self-righteous saying, well, you guys got to work. You know, you, you need to go out and, and make it happen. This, is, this, this ain't get rich quick. But it was my fault. I was the one who invited them to act like that because my marketing message communicated to them that, hey, this is like how it's easy, right? Again, this was years ago and I didn't understand anything about sales, marketing, positioning, and I didn't understand how to position my message in the marketplace to where it attracted quality people. What I found out later on, for those of you who are building a business like that, is that the majority of the production that happened in my team was happening from leaders, not people who came in with expectation issues and entitlements, or, or felt that something was owed to them, but leaders, which was about 10% of the total people that I brought into my business. And so I began to speak to those people. I began to raise the level of communication. I, I leveled up. I raised my frequency and my vibration, so I started to speak more powerfully. I started to position my services. Now, being a coach, being a speaker, being a trainer, I have to set proper expectations with people. I have to let them know, hey, dude, do that. This might be the hardest damn thing you ever do in your entire life, but if you're willing to put in the work, it's gonna be the thing that is the most worthwhile that you ever do in your entire life. And when I position it properly like that, somebody's able to come into my coaching program. Somebody's able to come into my event and they're able to enroll with proper expectations. You know, the same thing can be true no matter what the business is. The same thing can be true no matter if you're doing a service, whether you have a product, whether you're in uh, some random niche that, you know, is not as popular as some of these mainstream ones. Part of this customer clarity process, once you're able to be able to visualize your perfect customer, which I'm also going to include over on legendarypodcast.com, which is a domain that when you type it in, it'll take you to our blog. You can, uh, again, get at least these first five episodes via video, and there's some downloads there for you. I'm also going to include a sheet that's going to allow you to literally write out your target customer. What I want you to do is I want you to write out your perfect target customer. We call this a target or a customer avatar because I want you to know what that person's name is. I want you to know what age they are. I want you to know how they dress. I want you to know if they're married, if they own their home, if they rent their home because every single piece of marketing material that you create for that person, you can literally visualize what they look like. Every time you sit down to write an email or shoot a video, you can know exactly who you're talking to. See, I know exactly who I'm talking to. On this video, I'm talking to an entrepreneur. I'm talking to somebody who's either really, really eager to become an entrepreneur or somebody who has either made the decision. And I have a lot of people watching who are serious rock star, six, seven, eight, and nine figure entrepreneurs that watch from all over the world. 
And I've built that following and that audience up over the past several years. I know exactly who it is. I have my perfect custom, customer avatar, and I want you to have yours too. So over on legendarypodcast.com, you can download that under episode five. I want you to fill that out because then you can begin to bring some humanity into your business. And when you create your videos and your marketing, you can actually be creating it for a specific person. It's important that you know that target customer, that perfect avatar, whoever that is, because then you can speak to that person instead of just be randomly trying to speak to everybody. Because what we find out is when we try to speak to everybody, we end up speaking to nobody. So back to the process of getting clarity and continued clarity about our perfect customer. There's an important aspect of this whole process, which is also understanding what makes them tick. A lot of people, they just, they don't spend the time because they feel like it's too much work or they just maybe don't have an outline what I'm, like I'm giving you right now to really sit down and do the research on like, what is, what is my, my perfect target customer? Like, what are they, what are they, what are they, what is painful in their life? What are they struggling with? Like, what's keeping them up at night? What are the things that, that they really, really, really want at a, like, what are their unvoiced skepticisms? Like if they were to watch my video, what is the thing that they may be thinking in their head that they're not thinking out loud? Like if you have somebody in an event room or a live space or even watching a video online, like they might may not verbally say what they're skeptical of. They may just feel it inside and be thinking it in their head. And you got to know what that is. Because one of the worst things that entrepreneurs do is they try to like act like that stuff doesn't exist. But if you know your target customer, like specifically, and there's questions, you can find it over on the worksheets, like what's not working right now in their business? What are the top three things that they're afraid of? What are the top three unvoiced skepticisms that they have in, in buying from you? What are the alternatives to investing in your product? Like what, what are they most like? Let's not act like, let's not do elephant in the middle of the room stuff. That's one way to drive your business into the ground. Like people are probably looking around at stuff. So what are the alternatives that they have to invest in your product and service? What will they most likely continue to do? You know, if they don't invest in your product, you got to know that so you can talk about, hey, you can either continue to do this, this, and this, or the alternative is that I've created this solution for you, my product, my service, and today I have it for you for X, Y, Z. What do they need to know about your product or service right now in order to buy? Do they need to know that there's a 30-day refund policy? Do they need to feel safe, like the risk reversal element? How are you taking away their risk and putting it all on your shoulders? You know, there was a campaign that we ran pretty successfully where we were signing people up for coaching programs and stuff. And like the way that I sell is just, I, I never, it's never a pressure thing. I always just say, Hey, this is what it is. I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to prove that I can help you by just doing videos and podcasts and teaching you. It, that's how I demonstrate that I can help you by actually helping you. And I want to do calls to make sure that you're right for this. And if at the end of the call, you feel like, it wasn't the most valuable thing you've had all year, we'll actually pay you $100 for wasting your time. So we reversed the risk. So that's what they needed to know in order to sign up for the call so we could coach them a little bit and determine if they were a good fit for one of our coaching programs and then offer to sell it to them. But like that's what they needed to know was that, hey, if I jump on this, first of all, this isn't gonna be some big sales pitch. So I would actually say, just like I, noted up here with their top three unvoiced skepticisms, I would actually tell people, look, this is not a sales pitch in disguise. And if you feel this is a waste of your time at the end of our call, we'll actually PayPal or mail you a hundred bucks. So I was going right ahead because I did the research on my customer. I was going ahead and I was saying, Hey, look, you may be thinking that if you get on a free coaching call, we're just going to try to pitch you something. Don't worry. It's not our style. That's not how we operate. This is actually the value that we're going to give you on the call. And at the end of the call, we are going to make an offer to you if we feel that you're a good fit for it. But if you don't want it, cool, we can totally still be friends. And at the end of the call, if you feel that it was like a big waste of your time, we will actually send you money just as a thank you for allowing us to have the opportunity to serve you. So 
I developed all of this language and I've developed this ability to be able to make offers because not because this stuff just magically downloads into my head and downloads. Uh, roll with me here on this one. But because I'm taking the stuff that I'm preaching and I'm actually applying it to my life. I'm practicing what I'm preaching. So I hope that this serves you and makes sense because if you do this and if you go and you take a little bit of extra time on the front end, and even if you're inside of your business to step back, one of the biggest mistakes I see entrepreneurs make is they get so involved in their business that they don't ever stop to work on their business. And being an entrepreneur, especially if you're if you own the business or you're you know working as somebody who's executing you know a lot of the things that are making the company move forward, you need to be able to step back and and really say, okay, what is actually going on here? Because most entrepreneurs they walk they go through their business like this with their eyes closed and their head in the sand and wonder why in the hell things are tanking, and it's because they've got to pull their head out of their ass and they've got to take a step back, get on top of their business, and do stuff like this. This will serve you if you do it in a way that will be far beyond any money that you could ever send me. And, uh, and, and I hope that it serves you. And that's the entire reason why I wanted to do this podcast was not because I wanted to do more because, hell, we're already busy. We're all busy. And I appreciate the time that you spend with me here on this podcast. It's very, it's much appreciated. And uh, my hope is that this stuff serves you at a level that's so deep and meaningful and that I have the opportunity to be able to meet you and serve you on a higher level someday at one of our events or in one of our programs. So with that being said, you can find the worksheet that I've just been going through. These questions weren't just off the top of my head. I've actually gone through them. I'm also going to include the target customer worksheet for you over on legendarypodcast.com. You can download those. You can go through them. You can do them on your own time. And, you know, Even if you're somebody who's like, okay, I'm not going to get out the pen and paper, damn it. You can go through them and you can see them. My recommendation, and if you want to take this, this is also advice that I give some of my twenty-five and fifty thousand dollar clients who pay me obviously a lot of money to give them advice and counsel on their business. These are some of the practice. These are some of the the, the practices and some of the exercises that I'll take them through as well. So this is my gift to you. Use it well. It will make a huge difference in your life. It has in the three million dollar businesses that I built that have done very well. And when they haven't, it's because I didn't step back to do this kind of stuff. So clarity is key. Without clarity, an entrepreneur does not have confidence because they don't know what they need to do. I want you to get to a point to where every single day you get up out of bed, you know exactly what you want, you know exactly who you're serving, you know exactly what your offer is, okay, what your product is, and you just get up and almost mindlessly execute and you're not wasting a bunch of brain space trying to figure things out and redo your curriculum or figure out who you're talking to every single day. You want to have a system and you want to continue to perfect that and refine that over the months and years. And if you do, my friend, you will be legendary. I promise you that. So again, legendarypodcast.com. You can find the video if you want to watch that. You can find the downloads. Give us a rating. Give us a comment here on iTunes. We appreciate it. And share this if you feel it'll bring value to somebody's life. This is Dave Sharp. Stay legendary. Live with passion. I'll see you on the next podcast. Talk soon.